So you, one thing you might be wondering, what's with the 19 kbps sample rate, or bit rate? You're probably most familiar with MP3s being 128 kbps. So why 19? How can that even be good at all? You'd think that's going to sound so horrible. You'd actually be very surprised. And, well, I'll show you just how good of quality that really is. And, let's see, source files, results. <coughs> um, hmm. I need to reference this so I can find out what those ranges are. 30, I think that should be easy enough to remember. Starts at 100, so I'll go 99% true speed. Um, this is a 32. This is one of those 32K files. Hmm. Closed Windows Explorer unexpectedly. <laughs> um, let's see. Music, source files, results. No, I wanted it to convert. Now, this is the 32K file. This is edit, so I can see what the bat file's got in it. Yeah, bat for batch. ABR 40. That means 40 kilobits per second. Now, that is way below what CD quality calls for. But guess what this is going to sound like? <laughs> YouTube's audio quality is actually even worse than that. Surprised? Okay, I'll try another one. There's no distortions at all. There wasn't any of that high-pitched distortions and stuff like that. Um, let's see, well, I can close that. Um, what's another one in that range? Yeah, it's 75, so I'll go 74. Yes. Uh, let's see, 74, too far, 74, this one's so close to that 75, yep, this is one of those 24s, and let's okay, this is 31 kilobits per second, you think that's going to be even worse quality, but, guess what? Sounds crisp and clear still. Uh, well, I need to memorize it. So I'm going to cut this in half. Let's see, it's 37458. I'll just copy that and I'll set the original to that just so you can compare. Ready? that such a low, low sample rate or bit rate like that can be... you can't even tell the difference. Even if I test it in my MP3 player and go with pretty much absolute silence, crank the volume up just a little bit, almost to, to the point where I start getting uncomfortable, which is about 60 decibels, and, well, I still can't detect anything. And get this. This value surprisingly, is 10% higher than what my experiment data has told me. Experiment data, huh? Well, there's actually a reason for that. I basically tried various bit rates. I think this one was from 24 to 32 or something. I don't remember my exact range. But I tried every bit rate from there, and I went 
to the point where I could barely hear any distortions at all. And then I went one higher, then I added 10% onto that. That's the 10% is just for a safety margin. And that one is to cover the uncertainty on that one particular case. But yeah, that's quite surprising that such a low quality like this 23 can do have such good quality. You might be wondering, why is that? Well, normally MP3s are CBR, constant bit rate. Average bit rate varies it based on, well, your preset average. Why don't I use VBR? There's a problem. VBR, strangely enough, uses significantly higher quality than this, otherwise wasting it. Even at the worst, I just don't get it. I think ABR kind of needs a, a fix or something, but I'm not sure. But the key to everything is to consider the data rate. Okay? Like this 58. Hmm. Even that still seems really, really low. So, let's run some numbers. Okay, ready? Your typical CD plays music at 44,100 hertz. That's basically your standard. Now, because it's 16-bit instead of stereo, instead of 8-bit or 24, you have to multiply by 2. And, instead of mono, it's stereo. So, there's two different waveforms played at, at the same time, one to each speaker, basically. So, you got another times 2. This is the data rate. Remember that number. I'm going to copy that. Okay. Now, my case is different. Okay, this case I'm using 48,000 hertz. Okay. Now, I use 16 bit and I use mono instead of stereo. Why don't I use stereo? Easy. The two waveforms are virtually identical. There's almost no difference between them. Well, there are actual differences that I can see in the waveform, but listen to one speaker, listen to the other, fill, puts offset the balance and stuff like that. There's no, no detectable difference. So, why waste bandwidth and disk space? Cut it back. So, times one. Now, that is my new data rate. Okay, so multiply this by that. And for your 128 kbps equivalent, that is what I would otherwise use. Um, hmm. But that's way higher than the 58. Something doesn't make sense. Ah, that's the difference between constant bit rate and average bit rate. Because average bit rate varies the amount of bits needed for each section, you actually get better quality. For simple parts, fewer bits are used, like silence, for example, or pure tones. Those are guaranteed to be the best compressing possible. But complex stuff, that's a different subject. That is otherwise going to end up using a lot more bits. So, by average kind of blending the low and the high together, you actually get higher quality. And thus, that's why the 58, and you have to remember that plus 1 and the plus 10 percent, it's already yeah, tacked on to that. So yeah, the, my base is like 52 from what my experiment data is. So that's basically a result based on just that alone. So yeah, I'm saving basically almost 75 percent, or I'm using three quarters the possible disk space. Pretty impressive, isn't it? And, well, what about the 32, then? I'll do the same thing. Okay, uh, the 32, that's 32,000 for the bit rate, and then you got it times 2. So, okay, divide by the CD basis. Okay, that's tiny already. Times 128, and you already get the 46. Still higher, but remember, that's 10% plus 1 more. So that would actually, I think my basis was 35 on this case. So 35 versus 46, and what do you get? Roughly about the same ratio. 75%. 
See how that all lines up? Pretty neat, huh? That's, and because, you remember how the uh, pitch, because there's no point in using a very high sample rate when there's no frequencies above 8 kilohertz, for example, in the audio, from looking at the spectrum. So, use a lower sample rate. Reduce the bit rate, or the uh, data rate, or base data rate, and thus, you still get the same thing. Pretty impressive, isn't it? But that otherwise concludes my process for processing music. This video was created by Alilalia. Thank you for watching.